Welcome to The Legal View. I'm David Hogg and this is Aaron Gartland. Tonight our special guest is Derry Shambly, owner of Shambly and & Son, and his son Dexter. And on tonight's edition of The Legal Brief, David and I are going to be discussing the importance of getting the right medical treatment if you have a personal injury or accident case. American law is complex and not always easily understood, so a little help and advice can go a long way. The attorneys of Hogg and Gartland Law Firm in Dothan present Legal View. The Legal View with Hogg and Gartland. Derry, Dexter, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Derry, you're the owner of Shambly and Son, which is a, a general contracting company. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, located here in Dothan. Enterprise. In Enterprise, okay. And um, Derry, um, how long have you been in the contracting business? Over 30 years. And if you will, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got started, and the types of jobs that you do. Yes, sir. Well, I got started with my father as an apprentice. And at age 13, he was pouring concrete uh, blocks, patios. He worked for the Corps Engineer. Uh, building dams and bridges, so I had to work. <laughs> and then I uh, just started doing little arts and ends jobs with other contractors when he wasn't around. We'd do interior, exterior painting, do ceramic tile, marble, porcelain, uh, build cabinets, do roof, uh, pretty much a little plumbing, change out plugs, ceiling fans, uh, pretty much whatever the homeowner wants. Put up sheetrock. Uh, we also have a website called uh, www.shamleyandson.webs.com, which it also have before and after pictures. And it also talks about different tips on uh, how to flip a home, how to remodel it. Also, if you never laid your own tile, it goes in there and have you measure your tile and you can come up with a way to put it down. I won't show you how to put it down, but it'll tell you how many squares to go by. So some helpful suggestions for the homeowner. Yes, sir. So, Derry, I guess the uh, name Shambly and Son General Contractors kind of speaks for itself. You guys do general contract work. Yes, sir. Uh, really, the name come from my father, and he had a general contract business in Tuxaloosa, Alabama. And as growing up in Tuxaloosa, I was just brought up into that. And after getting out of the military and doing other things, I decided to continue that business after. And I said, hey, this is something I really enjoy doing and uh, can do something where I can be here, here, and travel. Not a lot of paperwork that I got to sit at a desk all the time anymore. Well, now, Derry, are you guys licensed, insured, and bonded? Yes, sir. Tell the viewers what exactly that means. Well, in the license, we have a, we do a, a, we have two city licenses in this uh, enterprise. We have a state license. We also have a county license. And every city that we go in, we can uh, go in and buy a city license. If I come into Houston County, I have to go down and buy a city license. It all depends on what type of job we're doing. If we're doing roofing, uh, uh, adding on to a, a home, you have to have the city license plus a permit. And then we uh, insure through uh, the local uh, state farm and they uh, do all the our employee stuff. And um, we try to do the things that most homeowners don't want to do or their husband can't do or their children uh, want to pay for. We just come in and do whatever they need. And uh, Derry, you uh, do commercial as well as residential uh, contracting work, is that right? Yes, sir. We do residential, exterior, exterior painting, do roofing, whatever. The last re residential commercial we did it was with the company putting up textile ceilings. And uh, you may have mentioned doing insurance work. Uh, you have to deal with insurance companies. 
in doing some of your work, is that right? Yes, sir. We uh, also deal with uh, all type of insurance, uh, you know, that deal with uh, the fire, uh, just regular roof damage, uh, storm, just come in and hit a tree, fall on the house, uh, and need roof work, brick work, patch work, whatever. Uh, we just pour the concrete, pour the slab, do whatever need that for that uh, insurance claim. Well, you get to see people in a time of, of dire need, I would imagine, if there's been a fire, if there's been a storm, a house has been destroyed, and well, that house is somebody's home, and, and they are really in a uh, bad situation. Yes, sir. You In this business, you get to meet from the poorest to the rich, and because uh, everybody needs got to be met, and it's almost like eating. We all got to do that, but people... You got to have that trust, that bond, being professional, on time. Um, and we do before and after pictures, so that way, if we come in to a person home, we'll take anywhere from around 200 to 300 pictures of all the work. And that way, if someone come back and say, well, this didn't, wasn't here, we'll go back and have a date time on the picture, and we take, uh, we take pictures as the we go along through the process. If we paint it, and we've painted the whole house, and we paint the ceiling, we take a picture of the ceiling, we take a picture of the floor, of pretty much all of it. Then we come back and take uh, pictures of the complete work as we complete it. And something that you mentioned about being on time, uh, on the flip side, when you're working for uh, a businessman doing commercial work, well, it's important for them to have work done in a timely manner because that affects their ability to make money. Well, Dexter's been working off and on for about three years. Uh, you know, as any young son, he uh, he very uh, his computer skills have really helped me out a lot because uh, he went to Alabama to be a computer engineer. So I'll let him explain himself what he does. Well, tell us about that, Dexter. Well, like you said, I go. I went to Alabama for engineering. I still got to go back to complete it, you know, money, those situations. So, but yeah, I use those as far as typing up contracts, graphics. I mean, every, every and any possible thing that I can use the computer for, I use it for. And like I said, engineering, so I use it for... Shamley and Son, I use it for music. I just like computers and I guess you would say how things work, make them work. So it sounds like it's been a good association then. Yes, sir, it have. Uh, you know, also, uh, you know, I, I give senior citizen discounts and, uh, into our business. We, uh, being a veteran myself, I retired as a major infantry uh, officer. Also, uh, being in the Fort Rucker area, in the Dothan area, or you call it the Wiregrass area, it's a lot of veterans and uh, senior citizens. And I <coughs> give a discount to those uh, because I'm reaching that age myself. And you mentioned typing up contracts, Dexter. Um, you know, people have had, from time to time, who've come to see us, have had issues with a contractor and Certainly some contractors are not as professional as others, and would you agree that it's important for the consumer to have a good contract with their uh, builder or their contractor? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, one of the things that we do with our contract, we have a letterhead, and it, it goes in there web, with the website, also with the phone number, and then it goes down into uh, the detailed works that we went to the uh, homeowner and discuss what we're going to do. And then we'll go into each step, what we're going to do. If it's 20 things we're going to do in the house, we step it down. And then also we're going to put in the contract what time we're going to arrive at your house and what time we're going to depart. Also we put in there the payment plan. And we have a date to start. And if you give me a check, we normally wait three days after that check clear. If that check clear on the first day, then I'll call you, that person back and say, we'll be there on Tuesday, and we'll be there at 8 o'clock or whatever time. And uh, if they say, 
fine, and we'll go with it. And then also it has on that legal standpoint, what happens if you don't pay me? And, uh, and that's very important. It really protects everybody, doesn't it? So make sure everybody's on the same page and you know what the homeowner expects and they know what to expect from you. And yes, sir. The contract is, is like any you know, other contract. What I did is uh, when I went to uh, Shamley & Son General Contractor LLC, I, the LLC, the team of lawyers came up with me a contract that I could use. And they said this would cover the state of Alabama. And since we go, we travel, he said this contract will be anywhere good in the United States. So that's the contract that we normally use because as an LLC, you want to be able to not get sued and then someone stomp their toe in your home and they said, uh, are you going to sue me? No, ma'am, we're not going to sue you. We're here to do your work. But then it's... Sometimes people leave and, and then they'll call you back up and want to tax your assets. You know, they find out, oh, you got a, another house somewhere, uh, you got another car, and they want to think that they can tax that, uh, go to it. Well, let me ask you about a couple of issues that sometimes come up when you're working on uh, somebody's home. Uh, generally, uh, after you do the work, do you not give them an opportunity to go through if it's been a fairly big project and, and you have a punch list of things that might need to be uh, rechecked or, or, or gone back over? Yes, sir. We, uh, we do a punch list every day. We clean up every day. Uh, we uh, clean up the tools. Uh, we just uh, try to get with the homeowner or the renter say, okay, we did this today, we'll be back, this is not finished, this is not the finished product, and we got pictures of it, and we come back, and if uh, we try to treat it like it's our own home. We don't leave anything, regardless of the person, do not have kids. We try to protect even the elderly or the young, uh, 50, 40 year old, just go in there and protect them so they won't come back and say, you know, you left this here ladder under here, and it was, we take all ladders and all that kind of stuff outside. We stack all tools up in a, in a certain corner, throw it, uh, drop cloths over it, plastic, whatever needs to be done. And, uh, Derek, what do you do in a situation where you have a written agreement with a homeowner to remodel their kitchen, and then you're doing that work, and suddenly they decide that they want you to do some work on another part of their house, too? They see what a good job you're doing, and so... Do you write up another contract or do you have something to add on to the existing contract to cover that additional work? Yes, sir. We do a uh, amendment uh, to the original contract and amend that section only because that section doesn't interfere with the first part. So if we're there doing a, a bathroom remodel and they want the kitchen remodel, then we, we'll continue with that remodeling of the bathroom, but we also work in the kitchen if they want us to. And then we'll work, but the finance of one, if we finish one, we don't want you to tie up all the money uh, before the other one is finished. So each contract would have a separate uh, price list. And um, before starting it, we would come to agreement uh, how much money it would be for before I get started and how much money you will, I will receive this year and so the other remaining of it on completion. Now, Derry, you're a, a general contractor, so you uh, go out and get subcontractors who can do specialized work when you're doing a project. Is that right? Yes, sir. We uh, I, Most of the time we do uh, sub with other contractors. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, sometimes it'd be none contractors if they are not licensed but they've been in the business for a long period of time and they have a good working relationship we go out and if they're painters they don't they can paint but they don't have a license so we use them or they bricklayers worked for other brick companies before uh, so we, we sell it to them but now dear do you still supervise that work Yes, sir. We supervise all work underneath Shamlin Sun. Because ultimately, I'm a the homeowner would be looking to you anyway, right? Yes, sir. And, and most of the time, what I begin to do is, is have a, 
contract with my employees, where the contract with the employees will allow the employees not to go back and talk to the homeowner to try to sideline and do other work, additional work after we leave. And so uh, that have happened and in a couple occasions I go to a homeowner and do some work and one of the guys will say, well, you know, and I'll leave and go somewhere else. Another con the one of the employees say, well, you know, I could paint that for you. Uh, the, the homeowner might come to the person and say, uh, do you paint? They know they paint and say, how much would you come and look at this here for? And they'll say, oh, I'll do it for X number of dollars. So I come in my contract to, to avoid that person from going back, having any dealings with that person for six months. That means that it closed that window. And after six months, it's okay with me, but not the next day or two. Let me ask you about the situation that you probably run into from time to time where someone doesn't pay you. Uh, you have a right to claim a lien on their property. Yes, sir. I can go to the courthouse uh, and uh, search their property, and I, a different courthouse costs a different amount of money for the lien. And that would, I would tack a lien onto their home or their business or uh, ever how much property they have. And then I will put a lien there, and the lien is good for life. And then you have to sue to follow up on that, on uh, enforcing that lien. Um, in the commercial situation, when you're dealing with insurance companies, um, or with companies, period, I, I know that you sometimes are working for a company that hires you to come out and do some work on their property. Um, generally, they're able to write bigger checks than a homeowner would yes, be sir. able to. And um, do you get, do you take a draw, or how do you deal with a business as opposed to uh, an individual? We deal with both of them the same way. If it's 100%, I take uh, according on how much money it is, and the person themselves, we could go and get 50% of the money before starting, or 25% on the day of the contract, then a 25% within so many weeks, and another 25% of it when the job is completed. And then uh, what also we do that keeps the homeowner and, and the contractor protected is when they write that check, if they says that to me, well, this money won't be in the bank account until tomorrow, then tomorrow I won't cash it. I might wait till Friday and come back to the home. Do you deal with uh, bankers sometimes when someone's having a big project done on their home, they're having to borrow money from the bank? Does the bank sometimes get involved and want to look at the progress of the, uh, of the work? Yes, sir, and also the insurance claims. Uh, they uh, come out and want to send a representative out to, uh, to look at the work to make sure that the work is being done because the, the insurance companies want to do that too. You get a roof, they want to come out and look at it to make sure that you actually did that roof. And they come out and send their agencies out and take pictures and, and measure. And then I take pictures and, and then we take pictures and about half and then come back and they before the insurance company pay the final payment, they would send someone out there and, and double check everything. In the same way with the banks. What advice would you give to our viewers about selecting a contractor to work on their their building or their house, whether it be a residence or a um, commercial property? First, I would pick someone that's in your local area because there are so many contractors out there. I would pick someone in the local area. I would pick someone that's licensed, uh, city licensed, state licensed. Uh, and also, I would pick someone with experience. Now, Dexter, I imagine with your computer skills and, and, and knowledge, and experience, uh, you probably deal with a lot of insurance companies and maybe contractors from and, and construction companies from other states uh, back and forth with the different computer correspondence. Yes sir, like this one, Mike and Construction out of California, we're doing business with them. I go do inspections for like they have, they buy houses from all across the United States. I go do an inspection, you know, check everything, power, if it's been any city violations, take pictures, you know, just see the overall 
value in, I would say, condition of the house or trailer or apartment, whichever it may be. And to, like I said, take a whole bunch of pictures, send them back through, mostly we do business through box.com. I don't know if you know what that is or not, but, and send the pictures in zip form to the computer guys that they're supposed to be that's working for them sure. that I'm talking to and spending all my time talking to and then tell the actual CEO, I guess you would say, or the boss man, hey, I got it done. I faxed the W-9. I done faxed the inspection sheet. Usually about 12 pages long because it's very, very detailed. Dexter, we hear about um, the uh, slowdown in the economy right now, and there are a lot of builders who are not building homes like they used to. Has this helped your work? Uh, have y'all been busier with helping people remodel existing homes, uh, maybe since people are not buying as many new homes? Yes, sir. Because like you said, people aren't buying, so they're trying to fix up what they got. So that, that helps your business, and that's a good thing in a way. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is very correct. Uh, the most important thing about the website is that it tells about how to improve the value of your home if you was wanted to sell or just hold on until the market get well and do whatever it's going to do. But those uh, remodeling your bathroom, your kitchen, those are the number one spots to sell in a home because if you, that's quality of uh, most important time in the house. and. Uh, so the bedroom or the living room, dining room, that's not really. But if you got them, you know, they do these uh, fancy TV shows that saying they people spending a hundred thousand dollars in a kitchen and fifty thousand dollars in a bathroom to remodel. So those, but I wish I had some of them though. <laughs> well, it's good to know you can help people in good times and in bad. Yes, sir. I I I love to uh, get there and help the. The LA, we had a elderly lady, uh, we went into her home in Enterprise, and she uh, wanted, uh, we came there to fix her door, and uh, we put down some uh, tile in her house, and her bathroom was leaking, and we fixed it for, for free, and, and, and did some tile for her. How about that? Well, you know, uh, it reminds me, I've heard a lot of people say that it's hard to find someone to come out and do small jobs. And it sounds like you are able to go out and do small jobs as well as big jobs. Yes, sir. We do. Uh, we don't have the slogan, but we, the slogan we have is, lucky you found us. <laughs> Shambly being the uh, shamrock. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. good luck. Close. Well, tell our viewers how to get in touch with you if they want to call you and get an estimate or a, or a job done. You can reach us at www.shambleyandson.webs.com. That's S-H-A-M-B-L-E-Y-A-N-D-S-O-N.W-E-B-S.com. And is there a phone number? 334-763-0211. Well, thanks again for being on our show. Thank you. And uh, in tonight's Legal View, we're going to talk a little bit about selecting a doctor uh, if you've been in an accident and you need medical treatment. That's right. And, you know, it's important for a number of reasons. And, of course, first and foremost, if you've had some type of accident or personal injury, whether it's some type of on-the-job injury or a car wreck, you know, it goes without saying that the most important thing is to get the proper medical treatment and to uh, follow up with your medical providers and do everything that can be done to heal those injuries. But at some point that doctor is going to turn into a witness if your case goes to court. That's exactly right. And so when you're dealing with those types of cases, it becomes even more important to make sure that you get the, the right care. I mean, we all kind of hear in, in walks of life, and, you know, when, when dealing with a, an illness or an injury, uh, oftentimes you hear, get a second opinion. Um, 
go to a specialist. You know, you, you, you hear people, you know, say those things. And in a personal injury case, that's very important because for a number of reasons, and David, you know, you and I have had some conversations about this over the years with the cases that we've handled. Uh, some doctors, and, and they're very justified in, these re in their reasons, you know, for whatever reason, don't really like the idea of being a witness or giving a deposition or having to come to court or getting involved in, in a case. And some doctors just have the mindset uh, favoring one side or the other automatically without even knowing uh, anything in particular about the facts. Some doctors think that, you know, if you are an employee and you've been injured on the job, automatically that you have a motive to not get well and try to milk the system. And or some, malinger. Right. Malinger is the legal word that they use. And some doctors may, you know, be the complete opposite. So you want a doctor who can be fair to you in your situation and be willing to stand up for you if they have to go to court or give a deposition. That's right. That's right. It, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, and have you had an opportunity to see doctors in depositions uh, in court uh, who were willing to stand up for their client, for their patient? Yes. And again, you know, you, you don't want anybody that's just going to, like you said, David, just automatically favor one side or the other. You want somebody that's going to be fair and give an honest opinion. But if they believe and if they've given their diagnosis and their assessment, in other words, you know, really where it comes into play oftentimes is just say you have someone that's been in a car wreck and they wind up needing a neck surgery or a back surgery. And then you get into their medical history and potentially or possibly they've had some neck problems or back problems in the past. What's well, going to be a real issue was the neck surgery or back surgery. Was it a result of the car wreck? Or was it a result of something that happened years ago? Would it be attributable to that? And so that, that doctor's opinion is going to become very important in um, assessing the damages in the case. And if uh, your doctor is really not willing to uh, go out there and give an opinion, then it can potentially hurt the value of your case. Thanks again to our guests, Derry and Dexter Shambly of Shambly and Son Construction. To, and tune in next week to the Legal View. Good night. To submit legal questions you may have, email to Aaron at hoggartlandlawfirm.com. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Hogg and Gartland Law Firm and WDFX TV, Fox 34. The Legal View.